Hello guys, my name is Jorge and today I'm going to be talking about how to create multiple files using a single template in Illustrator by populating different variables using an Excel sheet. So this is a very useful tool for working very fast. Maybe you want to create a bunch of uh, business cards, a bunch of party invitations. In this case, we're going to be creating a hundred different cards for a board game using a single Illustrator template. By populating some of that text on the template using an Excel sheet that we got from maybe a client or you created by yourself for the purposes of using this method. So let's start. Uh, there's three simple steps to making this happen. So the first step is to download the variable import script. So Illustrator doesn't have this function already in it. So a developer created a script that it's going to allow us to import data from an Excel sheet into Illustrator. So you can Google it, as I am doing it right now, or you can go to the website. I'm going to put the website on the description below on this video. So on the first result that you get on Google is a GitHub link. You're going to click on that one. And you're going to see this is the actual script that the developer created. Now we're going to go ahead and click on raw. This will give us a raw version of the script that we just saw. This is actually what we want to download. So we're going to click on save as. And we're going to make sure we select page source. And cool, now we can save it. Uh, also, we don't want to append. And we're going to replace it. I have it on my computer, so I'm going to replace it. Cool, so there we have it. Now we go to finder. We can see that we already have a JSX. That's the script that we just downloaded. So we can do this on two different ways. You can actually just go ahead and drag that script directly into Illustrator and it will run just fine. But we can also, if we want to have it in Illustrator already for us ready to use every time we want, we go to Applications we find the Illustrator folder and then we select presets in English, US and there's the script folder we're gonna drop our script into that folder I already have that one in there so I don't have to do it so once you drop it in you go ahead and restart Illustrator and once you restart Illustrator you go to files and on the scripts tab, there will have your variable importer script. So there you have it. So step number two is to create an Excel sheet. So I already have this set up. And the way it works is that the columns are the variables that are going to be replaced into Illustrator. And the rows are the texts that are going to replace the text in our Illustrator template. So as you can see, we have a hundred different rows so that means there's a hundred different cards so we're gonna go ahead and save it as we're gonna make sure we save it as a CSV file and we replace it I already have it we click on continue there's no problem so a little parenthesis here I already added a couple of variables to this Excel sheet um, and I also made sure that we don't have any spaces on the names of the columns because it will mark it as an error when you import it into Illustrator. And also, as you can see, we created two variables that are visibility variables. Now, we're going to get into that in a little bit. So we're going to move on to the next step. Step number three is to populate the variables on Illustrator. So now that we have our Excel sheet ready to go, we can actually run the script on Illustrator. So go to File, and then on Scripts, we can see the variable importer. Now this is our variable window, right now it's empty and what this script will do is that it will populate that window with our data from our Excel sheet. Now we're going to choose our file, there we have the discovery cards that we just made, these are the cards for the board game. We're going to open that and as you can see by default every variable is going to be a text variable. Now. There's four kinds of variables on the visibility variables that we just made. 
We're going to select visibility. Cool. Now that we have that, we're going to go to options. And then we have our data set names. Now, data sets are the different the different records that the Excel sheet has. So if we have a hundred different records on on the Excel sheet, that means our data sets are going to be a hundred and they're going to be named after all those rows in our Excel sheet. Now, uh, this is going to name our data sets. So an increment is going to create just a number from one to a hundred. Then we have our dash. I usually go for dash or an underscore. You can go for whatever you want, right? And um, on the field number three, that's where I usually go for for the names. You can go for custom text, but I'm going to select area name since this is the differentiator of this particular case. So now that I have this name and I have our variables ready to import, I go ahead and click on import variables. So it's telling me I have a hundred records and there I have it. So as you can see, there's a bunch of text in this template and there's different objects, but there's no objects attached to those variables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make text dynamic for each of the objects that I want to replace with the text on our Excel sheet. So that when I choose any of the data sets records, it's going to change the text on those variables to the particular text on that row on the Excel sheet. So we go ahead and select all of our items in our list and assign them to our variables on, on the Excel sheet. Now the Excel sheet is already imported into Illustrator, so we can make changes on the Excel sheet and it won't matter because it's all like it's a different case. So we're not going to use the code one and we're going to move into the visibility ones in a little bit. So there we have it. Now we can select any of the data sets. We click on yes and there we go. Now every time we select a new data set, it will change the the text on our fields for the text in our Excel sheet. Now obviously in this case there's not a lot of different text. We can choose any of the data sets. We could also change the text in our description. This is the description field on the card. We don't have that field in our Excel sheet, but we could change it if we wanted to. So now, as you can see, uh, there's a none on, an on our encounter. So usually what the game's about is that, in this case, right, is you go to an encounter and then you draw a one star card or a two star encounter, enemy card, trap card, whatever. But in our first five cards, we actually don't have encounters in them. So it doesn't make sense to have that draw a one star or draw a zero star none in our text. So we don't want to look at that. So that's what we made those visibility variables. Now we're going to select the area. I'm going to make visibility dynamic instead of text dynamic. What this will do is that the code is going to try to look for text on the Excel sheet. It doesn't matter what kind of text it is, as long as there's text on the cell. If there's no text on the cell, that means uh, the text on that field is going to disappear. So that's why it doesn't matter what you have, what kind of text you have in there. So every time Illustrator doesn't find any text on the Excel sheet, it will make the text disappear. It will make it visible or not visible. So there we go. Now it makes a lot more sense to have a none instead of a draw whatever star none. So we can experiment with all those kinds of variables. There's also graphs and images. So you can actually change images according to an Excel sheet database that you have. So now what we want to do is to generate those hundred cards without having to manually export each one of them. So what we're going to do is 
we're going to create an action. So we're going to open the action step and we're going to click on here and we're going to select new action. Now we're going to name this action save copy EPS. So what this will do is what you see in a moment. We're going to start recording this action and then we're going to go on save copy. I'm going to file and then save a copy. And this in here we're going to select EPS instead of an Illustrator file. We don't want an Illustrator copy, we want an image. So we're going to select EPS. Now we're going, we're going to select our destination. We're going to make a new folder. We're going to call this folder EPS Discovery Cards. I have a bunch of other cards that I already generated before. So this is the folder that we we want to save our images in. So we're going to leave those settings as they are. And now that we have that action recorded, we're going to stop recording that action. Now we, what we want to do is we're going to select that action and we're going to repeat it for all the data sets that we have. And Illustrator is going to do that for us. We don't have to click anything. So as you can see, there's a copy that we just made. It's in our destination folder. And it created an image of what we had on, a, on the Illustrator template. So now it's time for us to create those 100 cards. So we're going to select the main action. And we're going to go and pop up the menu. And we're going to batch that action. So batch the action is going to repeat the action for all those data sets. So we, that's the action that we are using. So we'll save copy EPS. And then instead of folder, we're going to select data sets as our source. That means it's going to create one item for each of the data sets. And also our file name is going to be the data set name. Now you can have it whatever, but in this case, it makes a lot more sense to have the data sets be the names of the files. So we're going to overwrite the action. We're going to overwrite the action save commands. This will allow us to choose our destination folder. We're going to select the destination folder. It's already selected for us. And there we go. We click OK. And we leave it run. It's uh, right now it's generating one image per data set. As you can see, it's actually changing data sets. If we go to Finder, we can see that it's creating an image for each of the data sets and it's naming it just like the data sets. So if you take a look at the images, so there we go, there we have one card. If we select any other card, It'll have a different name, different encounter, different level, different difficulty, just like we want. And we didn't have to generate all those cards individually. So we let the action run and we can see that it generated a hundred cards for us. We didn't have to do anything else. This is, as I said before, this is super useful if you want to save time. You can just have a template ready for you and then have a database on Excel that you're going to use to populate a bunch of variables. So in the future, we could even change more of that text in that same template, such as the description, or you can even change the image. So there you have it. Thanks for listening all the way through, and I hope you enjoyed this video and it's useful for you. See you next time.